I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Bigfoot, America's Creek Devil. Uh, we have our good friend Joe in East Texas joining us today. Uh, Tom, you want to make an announcement before we get started? I sure would. I want to thank everybody this week for tuning in. And uh, I think this one's going to be a really interesting uh, addendum to the Mount St. Helens situation. I'll, we'll, we'll just stay tuned and you'll see what we're talking about. But in the meantime, if you like the show, we've said it a hundred times. If you like the show, let us know. Uh, click the like button and subscribe. doesn't cost a dime. And share it. If you're on YouTube, you've got the share option. And if you're on YouTube and you want to take it to the next strategic level, uh, drop down to in the description and we've got a uh, link to Patreon forward slash Creek Devil. And you can support us for as little as a dollar a month. Or you can go to patreon.com forward slash Creek Devil and you can do the same thing there. You just click the link, follow your nose, and we are eternally grateful. So with that said, I'm going to pass it back to Will. All right. I'm not going to say too much about um, you know the Mount St. Helens story because I, I spoke with a family member yesterday and uh, for a long time and got some brand new information about all that. So, but unless I, I get his permission to talk about it and uh, and hopefully he'll record with us and tell us about you know what the family uh, information was. So having said that, we'll just kind of put that in the back seat for a while until uh, or if it develops. So. Joe, how are you doing? Man, I'm doing pretty good, man. Really excited to be on again and tell my my crazy little stories that uh, me and Walter uh, encountered on Saturday. Well, I'm just going to give you the mic then and tell us what happened. Okay, well, you know, I was actually supposed to go out there Friday night. But I had a bunch of work, and I didn't want to leave the guys hanging like that. So being the great employee that I am, <laughs> I stayed, stayed around at work and helped them out and then Got up really early Saturday morning and got out there. I think I was at the campground by 10 o'clock in the morning. And so where we go, it's not really a campground. It's more of like primitive camping. <laughs> Every now and then people will show up there. It, so it doesn't get like really crowded at all. But I got there and uh, I set up. And I mean, early on, I don't even know, maybe 11, 12 o'clock. I, man, I heard a, whoop, a loud whoop in the uh, there was a family down the way, and uh, I just looked over at them. I'm like, okay, well, they, actually, they didn't hear it, or maybe they just, they just don't know. And then later on, I heard another whoop, and I think I even texted you and told you, hey, man, I heard a couple of whoops already. And um, So I, I figured it was going to be a good night to kind of hang out, you know, and, and uh, we're going to get a, it's a pretty good activity there at the spot that where we're at. And this spot is like our main area that we go to um, and we always get some pretty good activity there uh, a lot of good audio and not too far from there is where we have found prints and uh, you know some pretty good breaks and stuff like that also tree breaks so Walter he gets there kind of late because he was supposed to be there early in the morning with me too but he works nights and uh, and I don't even know what time he showed up I can't remember maybe 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon and uh, so he gets there, and I decide, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and start the fire and get something on the on the grill before the night, you know, before it gets too dark. And so we, you know, did all that. And uh, I knew he was tired still, so I like I didn't want to push it. I just said, hey, let's go out to this, you know, to the bridge that we always go out to. And he's like, okay. And so we get out there, and there's a bunch of people out on this bridge and they're all doing their fishing and stuff which they it never happened usually when we go out there we're like the only ones out there and it, it's also uh, an area that's known for a lot of activity and um, there was like all these fishermen out there and I guess because it was the weather here just started turning kind of nice so I was like well let's go down this other area that we go to and 
they're like, okay, we'll go down that way. So it's a little bit of a drive, but you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes, you know, down this long dirt road. And we get down there, and there's people there too. <laughs> and I'm like, holy cow, man, you know, there's people everywhere. And he goes, boy, do you want to go out to my area? And we really weren't planning on it because it was kind of getting late. And I, like I said, I knew he, I, I just knew he was tired. And he's like, I'm like, yeah, dude, if you want to go out there, we'll go out there. And and this was, by the time we get out there, it's like 1130. It's like a, you know, 25, 30 minute drive to get to this spot. Um, so we get out there. And the moment I opened the passenger side door, uh, I mean, maybe 15 feet from me, I hear this crashing through the forest. It sounded like someone driving a, a truck through the forest. And I like froze because it's like right there. And initially I had told Walter, dude, that was like 30 feet away, you know, and uh, as you know, as we were, as we were uh, doing our recap, he's like, no, that was a lot closer. Now I got to thinking about it. I to check my, my adrenaline and just went right through the roof because it was like right there, you know, 15 feet from me. And uh, so I'm going to call that our 12 o'clock. The passenger side door, that's our 12 o'clock. So I'm moving towards the tailgate, and I still got my back pretty much against the truck. And I'm walking around uh, the back end of the truck, and like I said, I'm pretty much still facing the, uh, that tree line right there. Because I did, I, I was at this point, I was, I was pretty shaken. I didn't want to turn my back because whatever it was, it maybe moved 10 feet at the most, and it stopped. And uh, and that's even that's an estimate. It may have just moved five feet, um, but it stopped. <laughs> and so as I'm coming around the truck, I'm like, dude, there's something right there. And we're like, we never turn our flashlights on when we get out there because it is dark. It's super dark out there, especially at this time of night. And but I turned my light on. I was like, I, I want to see what's there because I knew something was right there. And then towards our two o'clock. I heard some more movement. Well, we both heard a movement, and we both put our flashlights over there in that direction. It's a little bit more of a clearing. There's almost like a little opening, if you want to call it that, or a path uh, towards the creek. And if you go down that way towards that creek, that's where Walter had his sighting. On, I guess on the other side of the creek is where that creature was standing behind the tree. So we're looking at this way, and then back towards our 10 o'clock, uh, we heard some more movement and I flashed my light over there and I'm like, dude, there's something over here too. Now at this point we're hearing definite movement. I mean, in whatever it is, it's substantial in size, you know, it, it's making a lot of noise. And, um, my adrenaline again, it's, 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 it's pumped. It's really, really getting pumped. And, uh, I hadn't gotten like this in a long, long, long time. And, I just told Walter, I said, there's, there's at least three things. There's something here, here, and here I'm pointing out. And he's, he's agreeing with me, of course. And even now that I'm talking to you guys, man, I'm getting kind of hyped up here. Um, so he's like, I want to go down this way towards that creek, towards that little opening. He says, I want to go check it out. And I said, no, dude. I said, stay right here. Stay right here. You know, and he's like, no, I want to go see. I want to go see. And this is like totally unlike Walter because usually he's like the first one to say like, okay, we're good right here. But he wanted to go see. Like, okay, okay, so we walk away from the truck, you know, I don't know, 10, 15 feet away from the truck. And uh, like I said, that, that, that street, it kind of, or that road, that dirt road, it, it, it kind of deads in. There's, there is a gate there for, I think it's, uh, I, think, I think they're a logging company is what they are. And, uh, but it's like overgrown, you know, it's real big and bushy there. And it's more of like an access road for those guys. Uh, so, there's like a culvert there and it, it's just like a cheap little culvert. It's nothing fancy. Just got dirt over it just so they can cross that Creek. And, uh, he's like, I want to go down this way. And I'm like, okay. So we walk away and he's like, watch my back, watch my back. But I'm like, dude, I got to watch my back too, because to my back on the other side of the road, there's nothing but forest there also. And, He's like, well, I just want to kind of look down here a little bit. I said, okay, well, just stay right there. Don't go too damn far. And uh, as he's walking, I hear this thud down the street. And I keep saying street. It's, it's a dirt road. Um, I hear this thud. And I call him. I said, well, there's something down this way, too. And this was a, quite a bit of ways, but it was a solid, solid thud. And 
it definitely sounded like it was in the road. And I just kind of felt that at this point, whatever that was, was a distraction. This was what was going through my mind, that that thud down there was a distraction, and I'm not going over there. I'm staying here with Walter. <coughs> and he's going to, towards that creek mm. on the left-hand side of that road, towards that side of the culvert. So I get the idea, well, I'm going to go this way uh, to the right side of the road and just check it out on this side of, of the creek. And as I'm walking over there, I mean, I take maybe five, six, seven steps, and I hear this movement in the water and on the bank. Just, uh, it's like, just like, uh, uh, you know, just like a bunch of movement. You know, it's kind of hard to describe what a bank sounds like when something's walking on a bank, but you can hear the splashing of the water too. And it, it sounded like it went under that culvert. And I turned my light towards Walter, and I was about to say, Walter. You know, and as soon as I said, as soon as I started to open my mouth to say, Walter, he's coming back up that bank on, onto the road again. He's like, nope, nope. He says, they're down there. They're in that culvert. He says, he goes, he goes I hear them moving around down there. So they sound like they're panicked, you know. And uh, I said, well, come on, let's get in the truck. Let's get in the truck. You know, let's get the hell out of here. Because at this point, I kind of felt that that uh, uh, they were re re regrouping. If, that that's just kind of how I felt that whatever this was was regrouping because it hadn't run away. That was the main thing that was that had bothered me. Whatever it was, it did not run away. It moved to the forest. There was at least four locations now at this point that I knew about that I heard movement and nothing was going away from us and there were there were no vocalizations. Well, I'll back up a little bit on that. But at that point, there was like no kind of vocalizations, uh, whether it was, you know, deer blowing at us or grunting or hogs and hogs just walking around or snorting you know you'll, you'll hear them right but whatever it was wasn't running away from us so I'll backtrack a little bit as Walter was walking towards that creek um, I hear this like this clicking or tongue pop it was like that's exactly what it was sounding like and Walter turned around and he looked at me and I'm like dude did you hear that and he's like yeah yeah I heard that and there's, there was another incident that happened when I was an incident, whatever. There was something that happened, and I haven't really confirmed it with him because when I heard that, that's when I heard the thud. So when he was going toward that creek and we heard the, that tongue popping, it sounded like something was thrown through the uh, through, uh, through the trees because you could hear like the little limbs, like you know, like like something was going through the limbs of the trees. And that was at the same time I heard, I heard that tongue pop. And that's when I heard that thud. So these three little things all happen at one time. Hey, Joe, and do you know what, about what time that was? This is about 1130 at night. Okay. Yeah, it was about 1130 at night. Um, and I know that because by the time we got out to the main road, it was already 1140. And uh, we, I mean, we stayed out of the truck literally three minutes. And this was like the shortest trip I've ever had. And after we heard that no noise in the culvert, and he came up the creek on the other side of that culvert, he's like, dude, they're down there. They're down there. They sound like they're panicked, you know, just by the just by the way they were moving. I said, let's get in the truck. Let's get in the truck because, you know, at this point, I kind of felt like we caught them off guard, uh, and they were re regrouping, and they were, uh, you know, they were just you know, either getting ready to defend themselves, which is, isn't a good deal, or they're ready to go on the offensive, which isn't a good deal either, you know. But given the history of was that? I'm sorry to interrupt, Joe. Um, two quick questions. This area that you and Walter were in, how far away were y'all from all the people y'all had been seeing up to that point? Oh, 20, 25 minute drive easy. easy. Okay. What yeah. was what was the closest you could tell the movement got to y'all when y'all were out there looking around? Like I said, about fifteen feet. Okay. Like fifteen feet. The furthest I heard anything was that thud and that was maybe 40 50 feet down the road uh, so me and walter were talking about that thud too he didn't hear the thud i did um, but it made me think about it because it was that one solid thud right and i know when we left we certainly didn't see a a, a rock or a, a log in the road so whatever it was it was a solid thud and that was it and i was like dude if it would have been like a rock like it would have to be like a good sized rock or a good sized log to make that thud noise. 
but it was a solid thud, and that was it. And there wasn't like a it hit and you could hear it rolling. You, you, does that make sense? So at this point, we were talking about it, and I'm like, I wonder if one ran across the street, or you know, just one bound because it's not very wide. I mean, uh, some of the videos that I've taken where I was going down this road in my videos on Facebook uh, that I make the reels with. Uh, this is that road that we're going down, and it's just barely wide enough for one vehicle, you know. So it's not like it's a very wide road at all. So that's what I kind of felt at, at that point. Well, not at that point, but thinking about it now, that maybe one, you know, took a one step across the road, because there is a pretty big bank on both sides that they would have to like make make a little leap. And um, yeah, that was pretty much it, you know. It was like a three minute little trip, and it was. And I was shaking. That was like the most sh- shook up I've been in a long time. And we were, we were got back in the truck, and he's looking at me. He's like, "Dude, that was wild." I said, "Dude, start the truck. We'll we'll do a recap later on." You know, just, just start the truck. You know? Hey, Joe. Yeah. How how close is this to the uh, big thicket area? It's uh, well, well, the big thicket and the same as the forest. It's it's all connected. It's all the same thing. But as far as if you want to call it regions. It's maybe uh, I don't know, forty-five minute hour drive, you know. It, it, but it's, you know, like I said, it, it, it's all connected. Okay. You know, it, it's like that forest. It extends all the way up up north. You know, up north of Texas. Uh, you know, you just have different forests that it's named by uh, that are separated by names, basically, or boundaries. You know, man-made boundaries. You know? Yeah. So we. We got back to the camp, and we we talked about it a little bit on this road going out, and that's maybe you know, a ten minute drive to get out of there because it's a long dirt road. And we get back to the main road, and it's like a twenty five minute ride back. And I remember looking at the time when I when we got to the street, that main street, and it was eleven forty. Um, so we get back to the camp, and the whole ride back, I mean, we're not even talking. So we're just like quiet and we get back to the camp and we sit down and Will's down and uh, Walter's like what was you know what the hell happened and we we, kind of, we we talked about it a little bit and we're we're very excited at this point we're kind of stepping over each other's conversations and we stop and by this time I had the fire going back up again and I just looked over at, at, at Walter and I just said, dude, that's probably the stupidest thing we ever did. And we just busted up laughing. That was, that was, uh, yeah, it was pretty intense. And I think that we needed that laugh at that point. And then we got the chance to talk later on that week also, because he had to wind up, he actually wound up leaving not too long uh, after we got back to camp. And uh, he had a situation he had to go take care of at his house. And so I stayed the night by myself. So, uh, yeah, we wind up talking later on that week, and we still went over some stuff. So there's still some stuff that um, I, I need to ask him, like like what he heard, because I I could have swore I heard those something going through the trees, like something was thrown. Hey so, Joe, this is Tom. Hey, what's up, um, in the past, you have provided some really excellent audio recordings. Um, did you guys do that sort of thing on this trip? And if so. Uh, Oh, we'd love to hear them. No, that's one thing that that's the whole reason why we went out there also because we were like, yeah, we'll go out there and we'll leave our cameras out there, our trail cams and our recorders out there. And we'll just pick them up in the morning. You know, that went out the window. We didn't even think of it. Um, I didn't even think about turning on my phone and start recording because as soon as like I said, as soon as I opened the door, we were it was right there next to me, whatever it was. I opened up the door and it just sounded like someone was driving a truck through there, and like I said, it may have went five feet, ten feet at the most away from me. Wow! And, you know, um, you know what that, cracks me up about that is that <clears throat> it doesn't sound sound anything at all like what Will and I have done with flashlights, audio recorders. Um, am I hitting the nail on the head here, Will? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No flashlights, no... Re- oh, did you hear that? Yeah, we'll get the recorder out. Oh, sure. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, when we go out there, we never have our flashlights on. If we do, it's like real quick, just so we can like, okay, where are we stepping? We don't want to kill ourselves walking over something. 
So we might turn it on real quick, just look at the ground and we'll turn it back off, you know. And, you know, um, people out there, they think, oh, you know, if I were in that situation, I would do A, B, C. I spoke with a witness yesterday uh, about an encounter he had two years ago hunting. And and he and his hunting partner both had one of the creatures in their scope. Uh, at first, they thought it was a bear. And then it turned out not to be a bear because it got up and walked away on two legs. And they saw it go up over a ridge uh, quite a ways farther, still on two legs. So they, you know, still coming to terms with what it was. But he said very clearly, he says, you know, I've talked to, you know, friends that say, oh, you know, if I were in your situation. But he said, when you're in that situation, it's not what comes to mind. You're, You're kind of in shock. And I think that's the message that people need to understand. You know, that's the reason we don't get a lot of this stuff is because, you know, when you're in the moment, that's not what's on your mind. Oh, I'm going to take my phone out and get pictures. No. No, no. It. it this was like, I, I'm not. I'm not even exaggerating. This is probably the most shook up I've ever ever been. And uh, uh, at, at, even as we're driving out. Walter looks at me and goes, dude, how do you stay so calm? I said, I wasn't calm. I said, man, I was shaking. You know, I said, I don't know how I kept that flashlight so still. You know, uh, I think maybe all the years of holding the flashlight for my dad paid off. I need, but, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, you know? So, but yeah, I, I was, man, I was like trembling. I was, I was, I was, I was scared. I'm not even gonna lie. I was scared because, like I said, whatever it was didn't run away. It didn't run away. And that's what really kind of freaked me out. And that is the spooky part. Yeah. I think any hey, other animal. Hey, what's up? Joe, this is Chuck. Hey, maybe I missed it. Was this kind of in the big thicket area where this all took place? It was in the same as the forest. Okay. Yeah, I, same. You know, you're talking about the the tongue clicks. I, I've actually heard that there and actually caught it on a recorder out there when I was there. And, um, and I know you know sometimes it it seems like uh i you know i've been in a situation like that where it just sounded like you know we were being surrounded and um that that's a pretty scary experience when you start to get the hibby jibbies like that yeah and so actually what that tongue click reminded me of was that that movie signs the way those aliens were talking back and forth, those little clicks and pops, that's actually what it, it, it really reminded me of that big time. Oh, that's yeah. creepy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's what it actually reminded me of. And uh, I've talked to a couple of people about that since then, and I've told them about those, that, and they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's a thing they, they've heard uh, it themselves, or they've heard other people tell them that stuff, too. So it, it, hey, it was Joe, the first time I heard it. Whenever you heard the tongue, the tongue pops and clicking was it just one and did you get the impression it was like giving the others orders or they all doing it you know yeah it was just one and now that i'm looking back on it and it it, even now as i was telling you guys just uh what happened i was kind of piecing it together because i'm still processing this when i think about it and i talk about it more yeah because when i heard that that tongue pop i heard that and then immediately after that it was almost simultaneously the thud and whatever sounded like it got thrown through the uh, trees. And, it, and that sounded really close too. But I, I just uh, haven't asked uh, Walter if that's what it was or if that was something else walking through the forest. Uh, but it sounded like to me like something got thrown. But it was it was pretty much simultaneously right as soon as the tongue pop finished. Hey, Joe, this is Tom. I heard that thud only once um, in an area where the creatures were and for all intents and purposes it sounded like somebody took a small block Chevy engine and dropped it from about 40 feet up into the dirt. Was it kind of like that or? You know when I heard that thud it sounded more like someone got like a basketball sized rock and just hit it on the ground. That's what it that's what it sounded like. That's what I envisioned like it was a good sized boulder Maybe not a boulder, but a good size rock. It says rock, yeah. Yeah, a, a good size rock hitting the ground. But like I said, it was just the one thing. It wasn't like I, I heard it hit and roll, you know? You know, I don't think people understand, too, the feeling you get when it's one thing when you hear something run. In your mind, it's kind of like, okay, it's going away, but then it stops. 
I had that right. happen. You know, I, I've told you guys before years ago after I met Green and Hinden, and they left, and my buddy John and his brother and I went to where the camp was at night, and we walked down the tree line. We saw the eye shine across the uh, um, uh, the gas line cut that they had there, and then we heard it run. And it ran, you know, like 150 feet or so from our right to our left, and then it stopped. That's what scared the hell out of us. Yeah, it makes you wonder, is it running away or repositioning itself? We, we thought it was coming back. Yeah, see, that's the impression I got. I mean, um, like I said, we were only there for like three minutes. But probably about the two-minute mark, I just felt like, like, like these things were regrouping. They were, you know, uh, trying to reorganize themselves. We caught them off guard for whatever reason, and... Um, you know, they just, uh, they were like, okay, we're not leaving. You know, this is our area. That's a, that's just what I got, the impression I got. Well, we also got back to camp. We talked about coming back in the morning to check out for Prince because it was, it was in the creek, whatever it was, was, was in the creek. But like I said, uh, there was an incident at uh, Walter's home. And he's like, dude, I got to leave. I'm like, okay. And that's like one of the uh, only areas I will not go alone. Um, I would, there's so many areas in the same as the forest where there's activity and people have sightings and, and they're way off trail down creeks that I'll go walk down by myself. That area, I won't, I, I, I just won't do it. It's just, uh, it's out in the middle of nowhere for sure. And, um, uh, after that night, I was like, Nope. And, you know, and these things, you know, to me, they're aggressive out in that area, you know, from Walter's encounter to the tree breaks to the hog being ripped off, you know, his head ripped off. I'm not. I'm not going in that area by myself. Is that it. that's the same area where the, they found you guys found the hog with its head ripped off, right? Right. Exactly. exactly. Forrest, what do you think? We haven't heard from you yet. Sorry, I had my phone muted. <laughs> <laughs> well, a talker seems to have a lot of opinion on on what's going on here. Um, <laughs> and my my new kitten. Um, anyway. Um, <laughs> well, it seems that Texas Bigfoot just, uh, I think, are a different breed. Um, they just aren't real nice around here, I don't think, and um, especially down in that area. And uh, there have been a lot of uh, stories that we've heard from down there about people disappearing and uh, dying and such as that and you know of course that lovely picture we got from about the hog um, <laughs> I, 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 you know I, I think Joe spending the night out there was a, a brave soul I think I would have at that point in time you know I would have probably got in the vehicle and <laughs> come home and said okay we'll just chalk that up to a, a, a lovely experience so Hey, speak, anyway, speaking of the hog, Joe, did you see <laughs> did you see that video that came out of Australia that I posted on the JRG page? Yeah, yeah, actually, I did. Um, what do you think of that? I mean, compared to what you guys found, it was pretty similar. But I'll tell you something else. Someone made a comment about the lack of blood being around up in, in that in the uh, up in the Samuelson area. I, Several years ago, remember I told you that a, a, a friend of uh, a friend had his dog ripped in half. Right, right. Do you, do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 right up. I mean, it's you know twenty minutes away from the San Jacinto Forest um, at at the most, and he found his dog ripped in half, and there was no blood there either. It was just ripped clean in half. You know. Well, well, you and know, they're drinking it. Well, the, yeah, that's true. Uh, but the Australia film also. Uh, I talked to Gary. Gary's been on the show before in Australia, really good guy. And he told me that apparently in the film, that's not the location the hog there was torn in half. It was torn in half farther back in the woods in the line of tracks. And they didn't comment about, you know, what they found there. But apparently that's where it was torn in half. And then it was dropped where you see it in the film. <clears throat> but yes, you know, I, I've been told. Um, by my sources, that these things do drink the blood of what they kill. And they do it in a very efficient yeah. manner so there isn't anything left on the ground. Yeah, and you know, that's kind of what we think about this hog, too, is that it was killed somewhere else because, uh, I mean, there wasn't a drop of blood anywhere, and there certainly wasn't a pool of blood. So it very likely it may have killed it somewhere else, and 
just dropped it off over there for whatever reason. It, and, and kept and, the head or right. off the head. And aside from what I was told through my sources, you know, another example we have of that is the Minnesota Iceman story. When Frank Hansen shot the deer, didn't drop right away, he followed it, and then came upon the three creatures with the dead deer drinking its blood. So, I mean, that's a that's kind of another corroborating piece of information. Yeah, yeah. and I'm still inclined to think that these things will kill a <coughs> creature for no reason at all and, you know, for whatever reason, take it somewhere else and drop it off, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes they don't, they don't kill to eat. A lot of times it's uh, just vindictive kills. You know, or do you? Or, Joe, when y'all go ahead. Joe, when y'all were in that area that night, do you think y'all interrupted a hunt? Is there a lot of hogs or deer in that area most of the time? There are tons and tons of deer out in that area. Yeah, so that's it's very likely. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe they were just down at the creek getting some water. You know, it's it's a pretty good sized creek. It's pretty steep. The banks. Um, I I kind of think that. Not only did they use, you know, that old saying they use the, you know, the waterways, you know, to move around, but I think they also use it because it's so deep and, you know, it, it's easy cover. They don't have to duck too far to not be seen, you know. So I think maybe they were just down there getting, you know, getting some water or something. And, uh, you know, we, we showed up and they weren't expecting us to get off the truck for whatever reason. And, or maybe they weren't expecting us to. Because I got off, I got after Walter. I said, "Dude, why did you park so close to the wood line? Because there is a little spot you can turn the truck around." And he almost always parks it like in the middle of the road. But I mean, he pulled up right next to the wood line, the tree line right there. When I got off, I mean, I could have reached out and grabbed a tree, you know. It was a setup, I was, Joe. I was, yeah, I think so. <laughs> and then when I was getting back into the truck, that was like the longest, you know, seven, eight feet I've ever had to walk in my life trying to get to that path that door. You know, because I mean, like I said, the tree line was right there next to me. And I was like, Jesus Christ! I'm just trying to jump in that truck as fast as I could. <laughs> then we get in the truck. And he wants to talk. I'm like, Dude, start the truck. <laughs> start the truck. And then, like I said, then we get back to the camp, and he's like, He was like, You know, if you hadn't moved towards that other side of, of the culvert there, and spooked whatever it was back under there, he goes, I would have never heard him. And he goes. I probably would have went inside that culvert or got close enough to the culvert for them to grab me. He goes, uh, I, I really think you saved my life. And I said, dude, save your life. You had the keys, man. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I, I can relate to that, so I, I understand. <laughs> you know, that just seems to be another one of those repeating patterns with the whole Bigfoot thing. <laughs> Trying to get the key in, <laughs> parking in the wrong spot, uh, only and not, not realizing it until after the fact. Yeah, I think here in the future, we're leaving the keys at the truck. I'm telling you, that's yeah. where they came up with that scene in Poltergeist from 1982. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a spe- uh, I have a spare set of keys hidden on my truck somewhere just in that offhand chance that they nobody can find, you know, the keys get dropped on the ground or something and you need to make a, a hasty retreat. <laughs> I got a backup. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I'm probably going to take his keys the next time we go out there and make a copy of them so that I'll have a copy of those keys. You wanna, if you want to go on that culvert, go right on ahead. I'll be seeing you. Yeah, yeah I'll be seeing you. You might be looking at my taillights or your own taillights driving down the road. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, it was, and like I said, even now, I'm still going through everything and trying to process everything and just, you know, the, all these little details keep popping up in my head and, uh, like I said, I got a chance to talk to, to Walter later on that week, and um, he, but he was at work, so we didn't really go over it one hundred percent. You know, that's you know? that's yeah. the issue with real situations is afterwards you take a long time processing that. I see stuff on Facebook, and I'm thinking, oh, these people went out and had this this experience, and they were done with it. Off to the next thing. I'm thinking, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, you know, like I said, even now as I was talking to you guys, I was kind of putting stuff together. And, um, it, yeah, so it's, it, you know. It, Joe, it's the a- more you remember, just write it down and then compare notes with Walter later on. No, yeah. Oh, yeah, I already did. I, as a matter of fact, I had it written down right here that I wanted to ask Walter about uh, about the about the tree thing. Like I said, it sounded like to me like something got thrown. 
and it's going through the trees. Yeah, but that was at the same time I heard that that pop and then that uh, the thud in the middle of the road. And at that time, I thought that it was that that was a distraction. And even now, as talking to you guys, I'm like, okay, maybe that wasn't a distraction. Maybe it was jumping across the road to get on the other side behind us. You know, because like I said, Walter was like, dude, watch my back, watch my back. I said, like, dude, I got the whole forest behind my back. You know, who's <laughs> watching my back? And, uh, but but man, I, I had that that light on a swivel in my hand in my head. I was I'm got the light flashing to the, on across the street to the other side of the forest, and it's just as thick on that side. And I'm trying to look at Walter because I can see his flashlight. And uh, he said, "I'm gonna go around this way." So I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna go around this way then." So and that's when we heard the noise under that culvert right there. It's a pretty big culvert. It's it's, it's pretty big it, as far as height goes. It's, I, I don't think you're going to drive any heavy equipment over it, but, you know, like I said, I think they just put it there and, and really just packed it with sand uh, for smaller vehicles, like cars or trucks to go over, work trucks or what have you. But, uh, yeah, and uh, like I said, it's just, it's just as I'm talking to you guys, I'm starting to put stuff together. And, uh, I had stuff here I wanted to ask Walter while we were doing the show, but you guys might have to have him on separately and get his perspective of everything. Joe, I don't want to freak you out, but the fact that when y'all pulled in and they didn't scatter and they kind of stuck around to see what y'all were doing and then they, then they regrouped, I'm glad y'all got out of there because that doesn't sound like they had good intentions. Oh, no, you're not going to freak me out. I was freaked out already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, it was pretty good. Like I'm telling you guys, it was wild. I mean, like I said, we were there three minutes, maybe four tops, but I'm, I'll say three minutes and stick with it. That was it was it was crazy. It was it was the most craziest three minutes of my life, and uh, I just uh, you know, like I said, even talking to you guys, man, I could feel my adrenaline pumping again. You know, that's just it. It's I think a lot of people think, oh, I'm gonna, I have this plan how I'm gonna <clears throat> approach the creatures in the field, and then you know, the reality is. You know, you you jump out of the truck and there they are. Yep. Right, and like that's like the only time there was ever been any you know activity out there is when Walter had his encounter, right? Like actual like we've been out there before. And we've heard whoops and screams and howls, um, stuff that sounded like uh, like cows, you know, that that wasn't quite a cow. Um, but those those are usually pretty off far in the distance at least you know where you could feel comfortable um so you know we've been out there at night before we've hung out and just we, we really like not only just hung out but like put the tailgate down and just kind of talked amongst ourselves and just kind of listened to all the sounds and put our recorders out and our cameras out and took our time doing it and you know uh so i was kind of expecting that you know like i said i wasn't expecting to really go out there like i said cause i knew he was tired and but, you know, that's what I was expecting, just to kind of go out there and put out our stuff. And uh, down that road that we come on, I'll usually walk down the road, you know, 60, 70, maybe 100 feet and, and uh, find a little spot and put a recorder out there or a trail cam out there. And we'll walk together to the creek and we'll put up a, a, a trail cam you know, to where we can see the tree where uh, that creature was behind and, you know, stuff like that. And uh, that's just what we kind of figured we were going to do. But... Man, those plans went out the window quick. And, you know, didn't when we got back to camp, like I said, we were, we were going to, you know, we'll go back in the morning or we'll check it out. It's okay, cool, you know. You know, he had to leave, and I, like I said, I'm not, I was not going back to that spot by myself. And I, I, I don't go to that area by myself at all. He went back there one time by himself to pick up a trail cam, and uh, he said he parked right up next to it, jumped out, grabbed it, and jumped back in his truck. You know? He left the motor running and everything. I said, well, that's good. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah going alone is not a good thing. Like I said, there's there's tons of other spots. I'll, I'll go by myself and wander around and, you know, uh, you know areas that, that we know that there's activity there. But the ones out there in that spot, man, they don't, they don't, they don't care. They don't care at all. Anybody have any more questions or thoughts or? Well, 
Um, I just think it would be an area that I might not want to go camping in. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say that, Tom? I don't know. Well, you know, maybe that little thin sheet of nylon might be all you need for protection between you and this thing. And then again, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, well, I'm I'll... curious, Joe, how far away did you, uh, you said you spent the night in the cabin. Uh, how far away from uh, this location were you? Oh, when I spent the night, it, it, it was in my tent. It was uh, back at the, our original location where I, I like to go. And uh, it, was like, it was like a 25 minute drive, maybe 30, but 25 minutes, probably closer to it. Yeah. And you, we, we got across, uh, there's a major highway that separates, that's it, uh, that goes down the middle of the San Diego Forest. And yeah. uh, so we're, we we camped on the west side, and where Walter had his experience was on the east side of that uh, 45. So yeah, it was a pretty good little drive back. And like I said, we didn't, we didn't talk all the way back, really. We may have said two words to each other. And then actually we get back to the camp and we're just both like stunned, you know, we're like stunned. And I don't that's probably the stupidest thing we ever did. Well, it's, you're always thinking, what the hell just happened? Yeah. yeah. In such a short amount of time, you know, it was so short. And, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, you had no time to really at that moment say, okay, let me get my phone, you know, let me get my gun out, you know, let me protect myself, you know, that stuff goes out the window, you know, it's like, I don't know, it just, it's, it's weird. It's funny because you go out there looking for the stuff and you don't expect to see anything, and then when you do, it's like, oh, crap. Oh, let me tell you something, man. You talk about expecting to see something. I had that flashlight, and I'm panning around through all the trees. I seriously at that point was thinking, do I really want to see one now at this point? I, I, I was thinking that. It was it was a constant thought that was going through my head. I would love to see one, right? But I, at that moment, I was like, man, what am I going to do if I see a sucker poke, poke his head out around that tree or step out or walk out? You know, I'm sure he I... just would have smiled and waved at you, Joe. No problem. Yeah. I would sure you would have too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, that was the last <laughs> thought I had. I was like, "What the hell am I going to do if I see one step out right now?" This is, and at this point, I was thinking, "Okay, this is the night I see it. This is the night, you know, that's going to be a no doubter. Uh, you know, he's going to step out, or one of them is going to step out, and you know, all gone. Walter's got the keys." <laughs> this, this, this is where we should have the ad for cleanware. <laughs> 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 or, yeah, or depends or depends, something. Depends, right? You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got to wonder about the attitude that Bigfoot seemed to have here in Texas. Um, it, it just seems to be a little bit different than uh, other locations. Um, and I don't know whether it's because of the encroachment uh, down there in that area, uh, you know, upon their areas and what uh hunting areas and everything because there's uh, the, that particular area in east texas seems to be really developing a lot but uh i mean i know that that particular that area the sam houston state forest and the, uh the big thicket area are designated forest uh and uh nature uh areas but you still you've got that encroachment all around them and i just wonder if that has something to do with their uh, real negative attitude. Joe, you're familiar with that area. Doesn't that kind of behavior predate a lot of that encroachment? Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say, that these things have been aggressive since day one before the encroachment. Um, I, I, I'm sure it probably just adds to it, but these things were, have always been aggressive. Uh, and I don't. I just, I just think for whatever reason, they're just meaner down here and I don't know if it's just a Texas thing or a Southern thing, but I know here in Texas, they just seem to be a lot, you know, uh, meaner and just don't care. They, they don't care, you know. That East you know, Thicket has notorious encounters of just being traumatizing. Yeah, and you know, 
I was gonna say, even if it's not necessarily like aggressive encounters, like towards the people, they just they just have that attitude. I don't care. I don't care if it's the middle of the night. I'm coming through your camp. I'm looking through your cooler. I'm looking through your bed. You know, just they just they don't care. And if you don't like it, tough. You know, that's really their attitude. And what are you gonna do? Get up and stop them? You know, right? Well, you, you know what's interesting, Joe, is I have not heard that I can recall a single instance of a benevolent uh, situation, benevolent encounter with Bigfoot in Texas. You mean there's never. no forest friends there, Tom? Not a one. I don't see him carrying flutes. <laughs> and when they go, the one thing I will say, and TW will back us up on this, and that is they have been seen, not in Texas, but I believe it was in New Mexico where they went in, you know, talk about going into the camp and digging through your uh, cooler and then digging out their favorite beverage. But, you know, we'll just leave that for what it is. <laughs> well, you know, the state of Texas has that moniker, don't mess with Texas. Maybe the Texas it is have that moniker, don't mess with Texas. <laughs> you know, Tom, I, that's exactly what I was thinking. Tom, I, yeah. I have to add something. You know, when I went to uh, New Mexico a couple of years ago and, and TW and I spent some time together. And before I got there, two weeks before I got there, there was... Uh, the local police were called on a Bigfoot encounter by a group of people. They were out, you know, partying out out of town, kind of in the, um, when you say desert, it's, well, it is desert, but it's not, not just sand or anything, you know, there's vegetation out there. But they were, you know, I, I suspect, you know, the Bigfoot was throwing baseball-sized rocks at these people, and I suspect it was because they weren't sharing what was in their coolers. <laughs> Well, it's like Joe was saying a while ago, you know, in that area, they're going to come into your camp. They're going to do what they want to. And they have the mindset, you're in my house. I'm going to do what I want to. If you don't like it, you can leave if we allow you to. Yeah, it's it's a different attitude. I, I've talked to people in the Mount St. Helens area, hunters that, you know, have had the contents of their coolers dumped out. Uh, a neighbor of mine had uh, was up elk hunting in an area just south of Mount St. Helens and they uh him and his two or three you know hunting partners were out you know hunting that morning and they came back and they had one of these really big coolers that's in the back of your truck and the whole thing was dumped out you know while they were gone so <clears throat> you get the ones that are sneaky they they come and get your stuff while you're gone then there's the ones there that say well you know what I don't really care you know I'm going to give you my displeasure right here in person <laughs> if you don't have what I want yep yeah, you know, there's there's so many encounters uh, here in Texas where you know people are in their tents and these things just come through their camp and they can hear them. The people can hear them rummaging through all their stuff, you know. And I mean, at that point, what do you do? Get out of your tent and shoo them away? You know, like, yeah, not a good else? plan. Yeah. <laughs> well, and remember, Lee had that problem here in Oregon. He was in Central Oregon, and he had left uh, one of those home baked pizzas in the box on his table on the patio, just 10, 15 feet from the door to cool off while a buddy came over and they're gonna have pizza. Just a few minutes later, minutes later, he goes back, the entire box is gone. Now, it wasn't neighborhood kids, you know, there's nobody around. No, I, I've been there. And if, yeah, there's, if there was dogs or anything else that took it, you know, they would grab a slice, either be a big mess, no something came in and just grabbed the whole thing and he was livid you know he knew what he knew right away i'll tell you something interesting about that house tom um you know kind of getting off track just a little bit <clears throat> but where he took me where his house is or was he used to live there but the house is still there um not many neighbors and they're spread out pretty good it's pretty heavily forested up there and the interesting thing I noted right away was that there was a tree, like the normal ones we see that are snapped over 90 degrees, about 20 feet from his porch where that happened. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. I said, did you ever notice what this was? He was like, well, it's a broken tree. I didn't think much about it. So we discussed it, and then he uh, he had a come-to-Jesus moment, <laughs> basically. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said they were they were marking your front yard <laughs> you know pizza here pizza here that's right <laughs> I, I think that's the closest i've ever seen one of those to a human dwelling well you know that area where he used to live at 
um, is really close to where, you know, my neighbor, we had him on, like, I think episode five of Creek Devil, back when it first started, <laughs> Rich. Hmm. And that's where he saw, him and a bunch of guys saw one of these things. He said the eyes were about nine feet off the ground. Hmm. They were just freak, did big yellow eyes. And then two years later, they were elk hunting. And he says, we saw the ugliest elk walk across the road. <laughs> it, and it wasn't later that he found out, I oh, must have been a Bigfoot. I didn't know they walked on all fours. <laughs> yeah. But exact same area. Yeah. Same area. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that area's got a lot of activity, like where Joe is. Lots of activity. Oh, yeah. And and there's there these things are really, really good at hiding and it's not that hard you know you get into a forest and remain perfectly still piece of cake not a problem well guys do we have anything further or uh any more questions for joe or things to bring up i was going to ask joe real quick has he ever had anything happen around his property how close is he to the areas i research oh i live in the city oh good yeah okay yeah yeah uh, uh, Midtown, actually. Stay in the city, Joe. Oh no, 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 man! I got plans of moving out. <laughs> actually, I was for Walter to live that, but from Walter's house, uh, I mean, you can hear uh, howls and screams. He, yeah, he lives. Man, he lives. He can be at the camp in in fifteen minutes. You know. Yeah, yeah. He's, he lives really, really close to the same Houston. There's a lot of forest behind his neighborhood. And uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes we'll, we'll be out there, and yeah, you can hear howls off in the distance, and like, dude, there's no way that's a, a coyote not coming from that far away, you know. Pretty- you know, it's kind of unnerving when you get that happening close to your house. I I think I told you guys that my nephew, um, he recorded some really loud screams right near his house in uh, uh, near Mount Rainier in Washington just a few days ago, and. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to him and see if he'll come on and talk to us about it. Now we'll play the recording, but um, he's pretty busy with his job and everything, so I have to see. But uh, and you, you guys have heard the recordings. Yeah, Joe. I don't know if I sent them to you or not. I'll, I'll send them to you. Uh, no, I haven't heard them. Yeah. Yeah, there's you can, and it's interesting. You can hear dogs and coyotes going crazy in the background. You know, and, and he told me he says, you know. And he's not somebody, you know, we've talked about this, I think, on Campfire Talk this last show, but he's, you know, he's an Afghanistan veteran. He's not somebody that's just going to jump to the conclusion that that's what's out there. But uh, this past summer, his wife saw something, uh, and they're, they bought some acreage, and, and they have uh, trees that come up into their backyard. And they, she saw something out there in the trees. And at first, you know, they, of course, you know, the bears always get the blame, but you know, something that tall walking through the trees is not a bear. Um, so they, you know, but they didn't, so they didn't want to jump to conclusions about all this, but, uh, you know, it's, it's obviously what's going on there. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing I wanted to, to kind of say too, like the movement that I was hearing, it didn't sound like a deer. It didn't sound like a hog. It sounded like there was a lot of brush being moved around and displaced, you know, it, it didn't sound like, it didn't even sound like a man. I mean, it sounded like someone was driving a truck at two miles an hour through the woods, you know, just, there was so much brush being moved out the way. It's crazy. And that's, like I said, and it, it just stopped. It didn't keep on going. It just stopped. Yeah. That's the scary part when it stops. Well, guys, do we have anything else or are we ready to wrap this session up? Well, I want to well, thank I Walter. Make... Oh, go ahead. Uh, no, well, <laughs> thank I was you, Walter. Going to make the comment when he was talking about, you know, he said that the the it sounded like it was moving the woods like uh, a truck driving through at miles an hour. I mean, how many times have we heard that, and then <laughs> other times we listen about how quiet they are and they sneak up on uh, people, and you don't even know they're there. So, you know, you got to wonder about their. Uh, 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 mo's on what uh, their mindset is sure. <laughs> yeah, what their mindset is there. Well, I have to wonder exactly. I have to wonder when they're making that loud noise if it isn't on purpose. Well, right. that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like 
you know, it's one thing sneaking up on you quietly, and it's another entirely different thing when you're moving through there, like, uh, and making a bunch of noise, and, uh, you know, okay, are you, <laughs> what exactly are you attempting to accomplish here? So, um, it's got to make you stop and, you know, think about it, seriously think about it. And, you know, I, I'll add this, too. So when I was talking about how I heard it moving along the bank and into the water, it wasn't like it was like this big splashing water, like anything running through the water. It was like, psh, 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 you know, just like very gentle, uh, like, like in, intentionally not making a loud splash. So the whole you know? the whole episode was measured. I mean, sometimes there were loud noises, sometimes there were quiet move, uh, noises. Well, yeah, and you know what? And I, I don't know if I said this, but yeah, I, I didn't hear any footsteps. I just heard the brush being moved. Yeah, and uh, I, I don't know if they did the brush in, intentional or if it was just like, oh shit, let me get out the way a little bit here and back up, and you know, that that was the impression I got. Like it just wanted to back up a little bit, you know. Yeah, and then like I said, when I got near that culvert, I heard it, like it moved on that bank, and then I heard the water. But like I said, if it was an animal, it, I think it would have ran through the water, not like, you know, walk through it. Yeah, most likely. Well, for- to me, when they were able to get so close so quietly, it's almost like they were saying, okay, this is how close we can get to you. We can get you if we want to. But yes. they start making all the noise, showing their displeasure, telling them, y'all need to leave. Right. And you know what? That that's probably a, a, a good word for it. When Walter, when I went to that right side, Walter went to the left. They were they probably weren't happy about being trapped in there. You know? And that's I think that's when Walter was like, "Nope, they're down there. They're moving around. I hear them down there, and we got to leave." I'm like, "Well, let's go." So that's my crazy little story, man. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Oh, very interesting, Joe. And and you'll have to keep us updated when you guys go back in there and don't uh, don't go jumping out into one. Oh no, I'll try not to. I mean, we're gonna, we're going to park in the middle of the road this time, and we're leaving the keys at the truck. Joe, you want to give everybody your contact info if they have information from that part of Texas they'd like to get in touch with you about? Yeah, guys, um, you're in Texas. You have an encounter. You have any kind of. Uh, uh, Weird experiences with these creatures, man. Hit me up. It's uh, jrg dot country at gmail dot com. And uh, even if you're not in Texas and you just want to reach out and talk about uh, your experience, uh, you know, I'll definitely listen. And we'd love to get you on the show, but you don't have to get on the show if you don't want to. But I would like to relay the, you know your story if you'll let me. Um, so yeah, just get in contact with me. And if you're on Facebook, go to the JRG Bigfoot Research page. You can reach Joe there also, and also the rest of us. So having said that, Joe, appreciate it. you as always coming on. And uh, tell yeah, Walter hi for us. I sure will. I sure Thanks will. for coming on, Joe. It's always yep. a pleasure. Hopefully next time you come on and tell us a story, it wouldn't have been something so traumatizing. Yeah, well, I'm going to go out again probably in two more weeks. And then... Uh, Hopefully around that same time, maybe early December, I want to go out to some property here in Texas also that I've been telling Will about his private property. Some guys have uh, uh, been having issues with them out there, so I want to go check out that area too. Okay, well, Joe, uh, all I have to say to you is don't give them my address. I have enough problems here. (laughs) (laughs) All right, everyone. Well, thanks for joining us, and, uh, you know, join us for the Monday show. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then...